Hello, my name is Rupinder Sial and welcome to Spartan Tutorials. Today we are going to talk about phage display or phage display, a revolutionary technology which has helped in basic biology as well as production of lots of therapeutic monoclonal antibodies. Now the phage display technology was developed by two researchers who got the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for 2018. Those were George Smith at University of Missouri and Sir Gregory Winter at Medical Research Council Lab of Molecular Biology in Cambridge, UK. Francis Arnold who developed another technique for systematic evolution of enzymes was also one of the co-recipients. The half of the prize went to the development of phage display okay so what is it about well the first paper that george smith published regarding phage display was in 1985 and the technology is deceptively simple but it is basically evolution in a petri dish so what is it about it uses filamentous phage phage is a short form here it stands for bacteriophage Basically, these are viruses which, which infect and kill bacteria. There are of many types. There are, you know, icosahedral, rounded, different types of phages. And some are these filamentous forms of phages. Uh, common ones among them are named M13, FD phage, and F1 phage. These are commonly used. In biotechnology, M13 has been very much useful for early days of DNA sequencing. In, in the case of phage display, however, what George Smith developed was a way to make sure that the one of the proteins that were produced by this phage, so this is the structure of the phage. In the gray, you can see the outer protein coat so it is made up of many different proteins. In the inside, in the black, you can see its chromosome. Now what George Smith did was, he replaced one of the fragments of the coat protein, especially the gene three, which led to the production of this coat protein outside. Now he replaced this gene with a foreign piece of gene. So what happened was, the gene that he introduced here was expressed on the outside of the phage. Now this can be used for a lot of different purposes and what he used them was for screening for different antibody ligands and receptors. So here is a typical workflow of phage display. Basically this is called affinity screening or affinity selection. Basically, they randomly synthesized pieces of DNA, inserted them into the M13 phage and made a library. So here are basically 100 billions of billion of these clones, basically all available in one single bottle. That's the power of this technique. And what they did was they had the receptor that they wanted to find it for. So for example, this protein that they are they have inserted here it could be the receptor so this could be the potential receptor or protein partner of another protein the other protein is bound on a surface so what they did was they took these 100 billion clones containing these different variants of the receptor or the protein their target protein allowed it to bind to these immobilized proteins so one of them as shown here bound this protein and this was later on eluted out and amplified because this was again grown in bacteria where they lysed the bacteria grew up multiple times so this allowed them to basically amplify and 
screen lots of different random libraries of DNA sequences which encoded the proteins, small proteins, which could bind to the other proteins. So for example, if you are looking for a ligand for a different protein, what you can do is you take this ligand, probably this is a peptide, you insert it into the coat protein gene, you replace there, it will produce this and these different clones and then you can try to see which of one of them binds. Now it is very hard to do it laboriously, it's a, you, you can't even think about how to screen 100 billion clones but the magic of this technology is you don't need to. You take this petri dish, you swirl it around with these all these clones, only some will bind and then you can amplify them. That's the power of the phage display and that's actually the... Now Greg Winter did another remarkable thing with phage display and that was using it to produce antibodies. Now this is the antibody structure shown here. As you know that antibodies they have this Y-shaped structure with the heavy chains and the light chains and the both the heavy and the light chains they have constant and variable regions so for example this is the constant region of the heavy chain this is the complete heavy chain this is the constant region this is the variable region this is the light chain this is the constant region and this is the variable region the antigen binding fragment is here Okay. So there are two fragments which can be produced because this full length antibody is pretty huge. Its gene cannot be easily cloned into the M13 genome. So they took advantage of the smaller fragments. So one of them was the antigen binding fragment that is the FAB which is only 55 kilo Dalton and it contained variable and constant regions of heavy and light chains. So this fragment here. So this is the antigen binding fragment, FAB fragment. Another is they could just use the small fragment which is called the small chain variable region, variable fragment and that is the heavy and light chain variable region joined by a small hinge or linker region and those are the fragments that you can use. Put them into the M13 phage. Okay, so these are the different antibodies that you can produce. You can mutate them, you can produce random variations of them and then you can screen for binding it to your protein. So one of the first proteins that they did develop it was FOS for TNF alpha which stands for tumor necrosis factor alpha and this is one of the main proteins which is involved in development of rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, it is a major protein involved in inflammation and leads to rheumatoid arthritis. So they developed antibodies which could target this protein. So phage display has found a lot of different applications. For example, therapeutic antibodies, one of the major applications, some of the best selling prescription drugs today. Identification of ligands for different proteins. Some of the proteins whose ligands were not clear, they were identified using phage display. So very important for basic research. Evaluation of protein-protein interactions, whether two proteins interact with each other. And finally, we have this list of uh, basically the sales in millions in 2018 for different antibody-based drugs. So you can see that some, many of these drugs, they are doing excellent business, more than $5 billion in most cases or couple of billion dollars even for the lesser selling ones. These are all therapeutic monoclonal antibodies. These are the diseases that they treat. Humira for example, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, Keytruda treats melanoma, non-small cell lung cancer, Herceptin, one of the most famous ones, targets breast cancer, Avastin, colorectal cancer, Rituxan, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, very strong, very debilitating autoimmune diseases. Opdivo, which is targeted for non-small cell lung cancer, especially metastatic. So you can see the potential of these technologies. So phage display has been a revolutionary technology and it has led to production of numerous 
monoclonal antibodies which are therapeutic in nature more than i think 70 of them are still in various stages of clinical trials so in the future we will see more and more of these monoclonal antibodies developed using phase display coming into the market and saving thousands of lives okay so this was my short introduction to phase display tell me how you liked it let me know in the comments below if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel for more educational videos like this till the next time we meet again take care and bye bye